Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and in this day I'm going to review Season 3, Episode 5 of Awkward Indecent Exposure. I gotta say, this episode was not as funny as the previous episode, it was still funny, but it wasn't as funny as the previous episode. Um, I did really enjoy it though, and I did like it, but I really enjoyed the subplot more than the main plot. Uh, the main plot got a little silly. So, I will talk about why I think it got too silly. As far as the main plot goes, I felt the main plot was um, pretty much about, well, it was about um, Maddie living at Jenna's house and how he's kind of taking over everything and she has no time to go to the bathroom. And that was kind of stupid. The whole thing with her not having to go to the bathroom and then her farting, I thought that was really stupid. But I did like the beginning. Like, up to that point, I enjoyed that storyline. Pretty much, um... What happens is he is taking over the bath, he's taking over the house, he it doesn't give her time to do anything, and he wants to live there forever. He, he doesn't want to leave, but she wants him to leave. And uh, she tells Tamara about it, and Tamara pretty much says that he's not going to leave. you got to try to end up. Um, and Tamara basically tells her he's not going to leave, and there's no reason why he should leave, and she tells her to kind of get used to it. And to kind of adjust to it. But Jenna does not like this advice. She goes to Valerie and Valerie gives her... I love the advice that Valerie gave her. I thought that was really funny. Valerie gives her the advice of um, trying to um, uh, try to get him to do things on move out. And then the part with the baby talking and Jenna says, I don't. I want him to move out, not move on. That part was... That was one of the best nights. That was one of the best quotes of the night. I thought that was really, really funny. Um, when she said that, I want to move out, not move on. Um, so then what happens is, um, again, she can't use the bathroom and she finally just lets it out. And after this, um, she thinks that she gets really close to Maddie. And this is when the episode got really stupid. They start uh, looking for porn and they end up watching porn and they end up having sex. And eventually, Natty decides that he does want to move back in with his parents. Um, after a really nice talk with Jenna's mom, I did like that scene. I did like it. I just didn't, I thought it got a little silly. Um, and so he decides that he's going to move back with his parents and everything's well for them. So, mainly what I want to talk about though is, um, the whole thing with Tamara and Sadie. Uh, hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. If it hadn't been for them, I probably would not have liked this episode as much as I did because they really made the episode to me. Like, them trading insults to each other, that was just fantastic. I found that to be really, really funny. Um, let's just get to that. So pretty much Tamara is invited to a party and Jake tells her, oh, no, 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 you can't go. That's not a good idea. And, um... She basically tells um, Jake how she wants to go because she wants to be, she doesn't want to be treated like she's a replacement. She wants to be treated like the best. Um, and again, she had some of the best lines. Um, like when she was talking to Jenna, one of her best lines was, Maddie gets the cow, the milk, and the, the sex or something like that. I don't remember. I really love, oh, by the way, I forgot to talk about this. A lot of times in this episode, they kept crossing over between scenes. Like they had someone say a, a line and then it would trans, so and then it would um, go back to the next scene. That was fantastic, honestly. Like that scene with her talking and then Maddie was talking and they were talking about the same thing. That was really funny. Or the scene when, um, what's her name? J uh, Sadie's friend. I don't know Sadie's friend's name, but, um, when Sadie's friend was telling Jake, uh, she lost her, um, she lost her virginity, and then, um, and then, uh, Jenna started talking about it, I thought that was, I thought that was great, I just thought that was kind of cool that they did it. Now, the only other thing I want to talk about before I get into the Tamara and Sadie stuff is what happened with Jenna in the writing class, and, uh, Nolan Gerard Funk's character, I don't know his name, let me look for it. Oh, 
by the way, um, Jenna's, I mean, Sadie's friend's name is Lisa. That's what I'm talking about, Lisa. When Lisa was telling Jake how she lost her virginity, and then, uh, Jenna brought something up I thought that was kind of cool. Um, where's the one you're actually? First of all, I love his character. I already love his character. I think he's great. I don't know if he's been on before. He probably has, but he, I just haven't seen him. Let me know if he's a new character, if he's been on before. Um, you know, let me know anything about him, because I don't know if he's a new character, or if he just hasn't been around the last couple of episodes, or if he's a new character. So just let me know if what what he's all about, because I, I, I don't understand. But... Her and Nolan Gerard Funk's character, I kind of feel like they're trying to make this relationship between the two of them. Um, personally, I think I would like her more with him than I would with Natty. I mean, Natty was really annoying in this episode, honestly. Like, yes, I get it. He really doesn't have a place to stay right now because he doesn't want to be with his parents. He wants to be someplace where he's happy. But really, I mean, share... Give the girl some space. Seriously, give the girl some space. I am a guy, and I am saying that if I had a girlfriend, and this happened to me where I had to live in her house, I'd give her space. Honestly. Um, I mean, I, I, he was just being kind of a douchebag in this episode, but he kind of tells her how he likes what she did, and how um, you know, he, they're in the rain class, and um, she kind of defends him. And he was very happy about this. I kind of feel like they're trying to make this relationship between the two of them. I don't know if it's going to happen. Let me know if you guys think of that. But I think they're going to. So now let's get to Tamara and Sadie. So with Tamara and Sadie, again, she's invited to a party. And uh, Lisa's there and Sadie's there. And no one, none of the other girls want to come because they feel so intimidated by Sadie now that her parents are broke. And I, I loved it when Lisa said how all the other girls are, like, afraid to come back. That was a really funny scene. And so then we probably get the funniest scene of the night, the scene between Sadie and Tamara and Lisa. Best scene of the night for me. That scene was just hilarious. And in the meantime, Jake really doesn't want her to go. He, but she thinks he's thrilled. I mean, by the way, not a lot of Jake in this episode. I thought it was kind of funny how she just blew Jake off. That was really great. Um... Yeah, so as you can tell, I really enjoyed the subplot more than the main plot. The main plot was kind of amped, but the subplot was really, really funny. Like, the subplot is where I was focused most of the time. Like, okay, this ain't, I'm kind of like, ah, uh, this main plot's okay. I really love the subplot, though. But what happens in the subplot is that in the subplot, um, as they are go, as uh, she's um, leaving, Jake tells her, oh, you shouldn't be with these girls. And um, she ends up uh, trading insults with Sadie. And it gets to the point where, um, I love the part where Sadie's like, when you kiss Jake, does it taste like Jenna? That was really funny. And um, what was the line that she said? I don't remember what it was. Um, there was another line that Tamara said that was really great, but I thought their insults were great. And so they decide to then do a game of Ouija board. By the way, Consuela was great, too. I thought it was interesting that they had a character named Consuela. Because the only other person I've heard Consuela on is Family Guy. Did they steal it from Family Guy? Let me know what you guys think of that. Um, but, yeah, I thought that it was really funny with the Ouija board. Pretty much what happened with the Ouija board, they tried to contact Ricky Schwartz. The first question, uh, again, they're in a big fight, and this was really funny, especially with Lisa. Because she really doesn't want all this to be happening. She doesn't like the squeegee board. Doesn't like the idea of it. And, um, so they basically say, um, that the first thing they say is, um, Ricky, who'd you like more, me or Tamara? And he says, say, and she, no, she said, did you like me more than Tamara? And he said, yes. And then, um, and then Tamara said, one of the best lines of the night, did you like Sadie because you were gay? And he says yes, and that was really funny. And then they ask him, was your death an accident? And then they ask, what was, was your death? And they go back and forth, pretty much. And they say, was your death an accident? He says no. And then this is the part that I love really, like, guys, stop, I brought Tangled. That was really funny. And the part where she says, can we play Light as a Feather instead? That would be a lot more fun. That was really funny. Um, and so, then what happens is, we end up finding out that Ricky Schwartz says that his death was not an accident and somebody killed him. 
And uh, that's all we got. I don't know where this is going to go. I kind of feel like we're going to have this plot now with all of them trying to uncover the death of Ricky Schwartz again. I was really hoping that Valerie would be the one to do that. But I'd love to see uh, Sadie and Tamara and Lisa all kind of trying to figure out what happened. Even Lisa. Even though Lisa doesn't really want this to happen, I feel like whatever Sadie's going to do, Lisa's going to follow her. There's no doubt about that, that whatever Sadie's going to do, she's going to follow her. Because it's just, they're best, they're BFF. So, obviously, whatever Sadie's going to do, she's going to follow her. She's like her partner in crime. Um, and um, so that was really funny. Then we get to the part with the sleeping conditions. Uh, Tamara really wants to sleep in the bed. But Sadie says, no, you can sleep on the floor, or you can sleep with my dog, or you can sleep with the dog. And um, Tamara starts um, crying and says, like, are you going to do that all night until I let you in here? And she's like, yes. And she's like, yes. And so Sadie says, okay, but if you touch me once, I will. And then they bleep the curse words. I think it's kind of funny how they have curse words in the show that they bleep. It's really funny. I mean, it's MTV. It's not a network that you can't say bad words on. Just say the bad words. I don't care. When they, when they put the DVDs out, I really hope it's uncensored because the, the bleep thing is the only thing that gets me upset. Um, but yeah, I thought that was kind of, that was pretty funny with that scene right there. Um, the other thing I really liked was, um, that, in that scene, Tamara was acting a lot like Cat Valentine tonight in this episode. I mean, very much like Cat Valentine the whole episode. Um, yes, she's more fierce than Cat Valentine. She's not dumb like Cat Valentine, but she's very outgoing like Cat Valentine. She has red hair like Cat Valentine. Just every episode, she reminds me more and more of Cat Valentine. It's very, it's really weird. Um, maybe it's just because I want Cat Valentine back on my TV screen. I can't wait for Sam and Cat because then the return of Cat Valentine. Um, but it, you know, Tamara is great. She's like a run. She's like Cat. Not, she's like Cat Valentine, and then like another, and then like her own self mixed together. So do you guys think she's like Cat Valentine? Because I think she is. Um. Yeah, so, just let me know if you think she's like Cat Valentine, because I, I think she is. Um, but then what happens is she finally gets a chance to sleep in the bed, but she ends up touching Sadie. And um, Sadie's like, did you just touch me? And she's like, get out. And um, and she ends up leaving, and um, that's basically what happens there. And I thought that was really funny. And um, yeah, so that's basically all I want to talk about. Again, let me know what you guys think of everything. What do you think is going to happen with Ricky Sports? Do you think they're trying to have this relationship between Jenna and Nolan Gerard Funk's character? Again, this was an okay episode. I thought the subplot was a lot funnier than the main plot. Like, the main plot was kind of funny, like, in the beginning. But once she had, like, the gassy the gas, um, once she had the fart come out, that was kind of stupid. And I, did, I thought it just got stupid from there. And, again, okay episode. I enjoyed it. I give it a 8 out of 10, especially for the um, Tamara and Sadie stuff. That was just hilarious. I thought that that was the best part. And next week's episode is going to be Halloween, but Jenna is boring, as Sadie tells her. So we'll have to see what happens there, because Jenna is not going to have a costume. Now, why are they having Halloween in May? This, this is what I don't understand with these type of shows. Just put it back in September. Honestly, that's it for my review of Awkward. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Which, by the way, my next video is going to be these summer shows that I'm going to be watching. So, you guys will find out in the, in the next video. So, see you then. Bye!